So thank you for joining this Ask Me Anything. Um, this is with myself and Dr. Cox. Um, so my name is Ravina, and I'm an academic recruiter with Aspen Dental Management. So we're the business side of Aspen Dental. So we're the non-clinical support. We're here to support our doctors and clinicians to focus on what they do best, which is dentistry. Um, so before we begin, there is a question and answer box below that you guys can fill out for any questions that you might have. And I'm going to be answering, or I'm going to be asking those questions to Dr. Cox, um, as well as any questions you guys might have submitted prior to. Um, so I will be looking often to the side, which is a second screen for me to answer those questions, or I'm sorry, ask those questions to Dr. Cox to answer. Um, there is a raise hand option, but I would refrain from using that since we can't speak to you guys face to face. So asking the questions in the question and answer box will be the best method to get your questions answered. Um, there, all are, there are options for asking questions privately too. So we can um, go ahead and do that if you choose to. Um, and I'll answer them privately or we'll email you afterwards. Um, so I'm just going to be the moderator in this uh, Ask Me Anything, and Dr. Cox is going to be the one who's speaking most. Um, so without further ado, uh, Dr. Samantha Cox, if you could just introduce yourself. Uh, yeah, my name is Samantha Cox. Uh, I graduated from Marquette School of Dentistry in 2010, um, and I joined Aspen right out of the gate in 2010, and I loved every second of it, so. Wonderful, yeah. So what options did you have um, coming out of dental school? Why did you end up choosing Aspen? Um, well, that's, a, that's funny. <laughs> um, so I was the stereotypical dental student. You know, my dad was a dentist, um, had a really lucrative, big private practice. Um, so that's what I was just going to walk in and take it over. No problem. Um, so anytime they did like the lunch and learns, the recruiting events at dental school, I would go for the free food and then just study for boards the whole time. And then like, as it got closer to graduation, I kind of took a step back and started like reevaluating my next 30 years. And I saw, you know, all my patients love my dad. You know, I, I was assisted there in the summer, you know, they all love my dad. He was nowhere near retiring. My mom was the office manager. She kind of had her own, she did things her own way. Um, my sister was a hygienist. My cousin was a hygienist. I had other family members like on payroll, never saw them at the office, don't exactly know what their job was, but I know that I would be paying them to do the same thing. So I, I just realized I, it would never be mine. I'd never have my own thing. So I, Aspen Dental was like the next recruiting event that happened. I knew nothing about them. Um, but I went, um, and it was like a, like recruiting event at the Waukesha office. So I went there not knowing what I was getting myself into. Um, but there was three other female dentists there. Um, you know, they're kind of walking us around the office, telling us what their mission statement was, what they were doing. Um, I loved the vibe. Um, they were talking about the work-life balance that happened, which was another Thing that was important to me. I wasn't married, didn't have kids at the time, but I knew that was on my radar. That was something that was important to me. And then I would recall back my entire life growing up, patients calling my house phone Saturdays, Sundays, my dad having to go in the office. Um, and I, I just, it just clicked with me and something just told me to just sign right away. Um, so I did, and I don't regret it for a second. Wow. So you had your whole family in the dentistry field and you yeah. decided still joined with Aspen. Yep. I was the only, um, there was five of us girls. I was the only dentist. So like, it was just a given that I was going to take this private practice. Cause right. It makes sense. Why wouldn't you, right. everyone wants their own private practice. Right. Right. And then I, I just saw caution all over it and headache. And I just, I didn't want that life. So 10 years later, is your dad still owning the practice? Is he still trying to sell it to you? What, did, like, where is he at? So um, my parents ended up getting divorced. And so when my, um, when they, when I, I told them, like, I, 
I wasn't going to take it, which was a very hard conversation. Um, my, they ended up selling. And then um, well, before I signed my, my contract with Aspen, which really was just a non-compete that said, please don't start up an Aspen 2.0 down the road. Um, and then just tell us 90 days before you leave. So I, I sent it to my dad. He looked it over um, and he was like, this is a really great setup. He's like, um, are they hiring? If he said, if I, if something like Aspen existed when I was graduating dental school in like the late sixties, early seventies, he's like, I never would have done private practice. And so many of my colleagues wouldn't have gone bankrupt from, you know, not knowing the business side of it. So um, my dad joined Aspen. Um, he was my associate for just a small second of time, which felt really good for a moment. Um, and then he did doctor development. And then from there he moved on and he bought an Aspen practice, um, in Janesville, Wisconsin. Okay. So he's still practicing cause I, that man will never retire. And then, but eventually when he does, I will buy his practice from him. Wow. Still buy around, but we all just kind of add, you ended up doing, yeah, yeah. You ended up doing what he wanted you to do, as in buy his practice, but it's it's an aspen practice, right? Which you feel but, more comfortable. But with. my own way. Yeah, it's your own way. <laughs> yes, yes. You did it the way you wanted. Yes. <laughs> um, so you joined Aspen right out of dental school. Correct? Right out of dental school. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, what advice would you give a dental student um, to be prepared coming out of dental school? So I think I think they're, they're twofold that's tricky. So because everybody's different, I think the best advice would be humble enough to know that you know just enough dentistry not to get sued, but be brave enough to try new things. You got you to push, put your, push yourself a little bit to try things. Okay. So um, someone just asked, what does it look like for a new grad starting at Aspen? Did you have a good experience? Did you feel supported enough to tie in with what you just said to to feel risky enough, you know, to just jump in. Yeah. So, um, you know, everyone's different and, you know, Aspen and recognizes that and, you know, different doctors recognize that. So when I started, um, I didn't think I was ready ever to be a solo dentist. Like I was one of those people that second guessed myself all the time. Um, I never wanted to like really push myself outside of the boundaries because I, you know, was nervous. Um, so I told them like, I want to start as associate. So they had a spot. The only spot that they really had open at that time for an associate was up in Sheboygan. And I was living in Hills Corners at the time. Um, so I said, okay, I'll, you know, I'll try it and maybe I'll move to like Port Washington. So like a little bit closer North. Um, so I was an associate, I think for three weeks and I was like, wow, I, I can do this on my own. And so they said, you know what, why don't you give it a try? There's an, own, uh, an MCD um, at a different office that's going on vacation for a week. Try it, see how it goes. So I did it and I loved it. And they said, great, because an office opened up really close to where you are now, so don't move. And then you can have the MCD role at this Brookfield office. So that was all within, I think like a month, month and a half maybe. And so then I went to Brookfield as the MCD and I've been there for 10 years. Wow. Wow. So for those of you that don't know, MCD is managing clinical director, which is oh, our sorry. dentist. No, you're fine. No, no. <laughs> All the acronyms. There's lots our, of acronyms. I know. we got our ass in terms. So um, MCD is basically a lead dentist and they're usually um, the mentor in the office. If it's not just them alone, they'll have an associate under them um, and they're there to help them and mentor them to grow to be um, an MCD in the future. So um, someone just asked, um, should I go into residency? Did you feel like you had enough support to not go into residency with Aspen? So, so I can't answer for you if you should go into residency. That's, you got to do some soul searching for that one. Um, but I mean, it's, a, it's different now. When I joined 10 years ago, it was, I mean, it was kind of like the Wild West. Aspen wasn't really big in Wisconsin at that time. Um, so we, the other dentists kind of leaned on each other and then we just kind of bounced things off each other. Um, but I think now because we're bigger and there's more doctors available and there's doctors in every office and there's more owners to do mentorship. Um, I think that if you, if you're confident enough to do it, I, I think you can. I, when I joined Aspen, 
I didn't think it was going to be a long-term thing. I treated it as a high paying GPR. So I was like, okay, I'm going to see a ton of patients. I'm going to get a lot of experience. I'm going to see twice as many patients as my associate friends. So heck yeah, if you're going to pay me three times as much as a GPR and I'm do the same thing, game on. Um, but, but now it, now it's truly like a GPR because there are doctors in the office. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. We do have a doctor development program. Um, right now, of course, during COVID it's all, um, via webinars and remote yeah. and like that, but yeah, yeah there is so yeah. much stuff for, um, the new docs coming out. There are webinars, there are, well, before COVID like live CE events, um, free CE, just pages and pages of free CE, um, people that you can call um, to lean on to ask questions like in person. So it's everyone's very easily reachable and very willing to help you. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. We have like a, things are changing now, of course, but there is like um, six months into it, uh, into working with ASP and you get to meet with people who joined right when you did. And you guys get to kind of be in like a town hall meeting and discuss what you're going through in your offices and suggestions and talk mm -hmm. about treatment planning and just it just kind of boosts your morale to like come back to your office and be like okay i got this again like definitely this, but... it's like it's like a pep rally for the soul that you need <laughs> to shake off like the bad energy and just re-energize yourself it's great right so you mentioned you know you thought asking would just be like your little gpr what made you stay i loved the vibe. I loved actually helping people. Um, I love changing people's lives. When you get that first patient that cries because you changed their life, that they can go out in public again. Um, and you, you, patients tell you like, I haven't gone to the dentist in 20 years because I've been afraid and I'm not afraid anymore. Thank you. Um, that, that, I mean, that's, that's addicting. Right. Right. So is that one of the, like, What's the most enjoyable thing about dentistry? Is it, is it that? Is it it's, more? it's that. It's changing lives. It's, it's definitely changing lives. And like seeing the good that you do in the community. Um, also Aspen does a lot of charity work. Um, I love volunteering for the Mouthmobile. So it's a big mobile dental clinic that goes around um, to different states and helps veterans and the homeless. And um, you just do free dental work for a day. Um, and it's, it's, a, it's a good feeling to be giving back to the community. Yeah. So, I so the people that really need the help, not like, Hey, my tooth is crooked. I need a veneer. <laughs> it's people that have been in pain, abscess teeth for years, can't get to the dentist, don't have money for the dentist are terrified of the dentist. And then you totally just change their life and make them healthier. It's amazing. Yeah. yeah I, I participated in that last year and it was just remarkable. The amount of people that participate, it's not only our dentists, but the lab tech, the DA, yep. Every front desk, everyone is there yep. like rallying and helping all these veterans that don't have access to care mm -hmm. and get them as quick as they can inside and really figure out what they need. And you have the lab techs fixing dentures, partials right there, like on yeah. the spot before they leave. And it's like, oh my like God. Outside I'm under a tent. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Like in the heat, like there's no yeah. like AC or anything, but they're, yeah. they're making the denture and they're making it yeah. nice and perfect and everything. It's it's really remarkable. It's, it's a great experience. And mm -hmm. yeah. Um, so what do you think, or how did you feel, um, as a new dentist, what do new dentists find frustrating? So it's been a while for me now. I'm not as young as I once was, but so I've been in it for a while, but I, I, I tell every doctor that I onboard and that I mentor and train the hardest part, especially coming out of dentistry is that six month slump. You come out of dental school, you start seeing patients, right? And then you, you start picking up the pace. You're like, I got this. My feelings are great. My dentures are great. My crowns are great. And then you bring your patients back for their six month recall. And you're like, oh my God, who did that filling? Oh my God, it was me. I did that filling. And then you go the next six months cleaning up your stuff because you're seeing it now on an x-ray six months later that's that's probably the hardest thing is like the blow to the ego when you think you did a good job and then you see it back later like wow wow i need to fix that <laughs> so how does that work with you you know being in a mentor position with new associates like do you have that conversation with them if they're feeling down like how does do you have oh yeah no like 
you know, I, I've been doing it so long. Like you go through, you go through like waves and, and then it's just like any, anything you do where you're like, wow, like I'm just having a really tough time, like getting my IA block. I'm this week, I'm missing my blocks next week. I'll get them all. You know, it's, it's kind of just like making sure people don't get too down on yourselves. Cause it's sometimes it's hard, you know, it's hard when usually, you know, Dennis, we get into this, we're perfectionists. And when we see anything less than perfection and it's our fault, you know, it, 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 it's sometimes a hard pill to swallow, but it makes you better because that's the best way to learn is by messing it up. Definitely. Um, so someone just asked when, so I guess it does tie in with, you know, you working with associates and stuff. What do you look for when you're interviewing an associate? Um, personality. Um, I mean, we all graduated, right? So if you graduated dental school, I assume that you know how to be a dentist. Um, like I said earlier, I mean, when you come out of dental school, you know, bare minimum, like, you know, just enough, like I said, not to like get sued for doing something like you, that's it. And then and that all, all that hand skill stuff comes later. So I, I look for someone that is driven to do well, um, is humble, that knows they don't know everything. Um, but at the same time, you know, is willing, is willing to try is willing to learn, is willing to fail, is willing to put themselves back up and not get down about it. And as a, and as a team player, I look for someone that's just got good vibes. Definitely. I got to be with you all day, not my family. <laughs> I'd like to have a good time. <laughs> of course, of course. So how involved are you um, with the hiring of office staff? We'll, we'll get into where you are in your position, but um, right now as a partner, you know, how involved are you in hiring office staff, even associates, hygienists, front staff, all of that. I personally like to be involved just because, I mean, I don't, I don't want to sit there for the long drawn out, you know, what do you do for fun stuff, but I want to get a vibe of like your personality. Cause that's, that's the main thing I'm hiring for. I can't, I can't sh coach personality. That is just who you are on the inside. Um, but I, I like to, you know, pop in for all my interviews and meet people before they, you know, join my team. Um, you know, my, the team that I, the office that I've been in for 10 years, we, we operate very much like a family and like we have like a group chat with all of us. Like we support each other and each other's like side hustles and, um, we're, we're very close with each other. So, you know, we want to make sure that someone, you know, fits that vibe. It's the good, the good energy. Definitely. Um, and you spoke about, you know, how you started as an associate and then quickly made your way to an MCD, a managing mm -hmm. clinical director, lead dentist, mm -hmm. you know, um, if someone, a student starts as an associate, how quickly can they become one? Have you seen other examples of slower processes or uh, really fast ones? I, I mean, that, that really depends on you and it's a personality thing. So um, it, it, people, some people have like a jump in with both feet, eyes closed personality. That for me, not my type, not my, not my personality. I'm, I'm way more cautious. Um, I don't like diving into things that I'm not fully aware of and prepared for. I don't like failure. Um, so I started, you know, associate then MCD. And then I, I really wanted to, I wanted to be an owner. Um, I saw, you know, some people like jump into ownership around me and not do so well, um, right out of the gate. And that scared me. So I kind of held off on it for a while. I knew it was something I really wanted, but like I'm, I was afraid of failure, especially when there's a financial commitment attached to it. Um, I, if I did it, I wanted to succeed at it. Um, and I didn't think I was ready. Um, and then I thought I was ready and then I wasn't ready. Um, so it, it, that's, and that's just my personality. So then I partnered with, um, one of my friends, who's like a good friend of mine that owned, um, the office basically down the street and then a couple other ones. So we decided to partner um, because she already had, you know, a couple offices under her belt. Um, we had no idea what that meant or looked like, but that's what we wanted to do. That would get me on the path to ownership. Um, so we kind of just stumbled through that. And then um, we had all these ideas of how we were going to expand our partnership. We thought we had some great ideas. And then when we ran it through like financials and the business team, which is what they're there for, um, not a great idea. So we pulled those off the table, but that is why we have ADMI to help us 
navigate because we know a lot about dentistry and we don't know all the ins and outs of business. So something that in our dentist brains, like this makes sense. They're like, yeah, mm, maybe not. Let's table it. So, you know, we kind of stumbled through the partnership and then um, I got an opportunity to go um, solo ownership at a different office and we both just kind of outgrew the partnership. So we both decided that, yeah, I think it's, it's time to, 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 for me to go solo. So um, my partner supported me in that. And, you know, we're in the process now of transitioning me out of my office that I've been at for a decade, which was a really hard baby to let go. Um, so we're kind of working on transitioning me out of that office and then now into my solo office um, a little bit further south. So did your, um, with the partnership and everything, was it just a, a simple conversation? Like, was she your, or I'm sorry, I know it's a she because we already talked, but <laughs> your partner, did, uh, did they, uh, were, were they your um, uh, owner? Were, were they the owner doctor of the offices you were working at already or? No, so no. So we, like we both started at Aspen around the same time. So we all, we both started at like what they call large group practices. So owned by Dr. Judge. Um, and then she started going solo and kind of like working her way through that. Cause my partner has more of a, had more of like a cowboy mentality. Like, sure, let's go I'll do it and I'll figure it out. And I am a little bit more, you know, gun shy on that stuff. So um, when, and then I, you know, made a run for ownership and I didn't do so well. Um, she was like, Hey, let's partner and then we'll figure it out together. And so, you know, we, we did and we kind of took it from there. So, yes. So you moved from the large group practice, which for many of you that don't know, um, large group practice, 80% of our 80 to 90% of our offices are owned by doctors, but there is a small portion that's owned by Aspen Dental and we're working our way to have doctors own those. Um, but for now, those are called large group practices, um, but they are available to purchase um, by Aspen doctors, um, just depending on, you know, that if they have the desire to move to that certain location. So did you guys, so you were in a large group practice and then you moved to one of her offices to? No. So I had been at Brookfield, like my, my office for, I think, seven or eight years at that point. So then she bought the office that I was working in and then we oh, partnered okay. together on yeah. that. Um, and then, I mean, we had, we were friends going into it. So we had incredibly open dialogue. And so like our partnership relationship might be different than someone else's that's going into it, not knowing the person. We had been friends forever going into it. So we had a lot of open dialogue um, she, I mean, it was always known that I was going to buy Janesville for my dad. We just didn't know like where the partnership would go from there. So, you know, we, we just kind of like followed the bouncing ball and then the, we ended up here. So when, when it came time for me to go solo, we always knew that that was on the table and this was just like, felt like the right time to do it. Gotcha. Okay. Gotcha. Um, so do you feel like you've grown as a dentist joining Aspen? Oh God, yeah. <laughs> I went, I, yes. I went from a person that never thought that I could be alone in an office with a patient to running an office, training staff, training doctors, placing implants, you know, being able to do like full mouth extractions with Tori removal in an hour. Um, yeah, so having a very successful practice on my own. So yeah, I've, I've grown immensely. I don't know if I would have done that in private practice because I wouldn't have had the business support. And that's been my biggest hang up. I know dentistry. I can learn dentistry. I've got a science brain. No one taught me business. No one taught me the business side. I had to figure that out, you know, with Aspen. Luckily I had Aspen who had my back that I didn't fail and I didn't go bankrupt and I didn't <laughs> didn't lose money. I, you know, they helped me to be like, Hey, you know, you gotta do this or, you know, this probably isn't the best idea. This is probably a better idea business wise. Why don't you try this? So I, yeah, I wouldn't be the dentist I am today if I wouldn't have joined Aspen. So going along with Aspen Dental, helping you navigate the business side, 
do you do your own treatment plans? Are there suggestions by Aspen Dental on treatment plans? Do no. directors come in? Um, do you get to do all the procedures? Did you ever, ever have to fight for procedures with other doctors when you were an associate? Or now with you being the main person in the office, do you try to keep certain procedures to yourself? How does that I'll work? keep a procedure to myself if you like can't take out a tooth. I'm not going to let you <laughs> flounder and take it out by yourself. I'll join you in there. No, I, I've never been told how to treatment plan. I've never been told that there's a, a quota. I've never been told, well, you have to do 10 dentures this month or you're on the chopping block. <laughs> I do my own treatment plans. I execute my own stuff. No one talks to me about clinical stuff. The only thing Aspen talks to me about is business stuff, um, you know, metrics and insurance and, um, you know, like different types of fillings or crowns that some insurances don't cover. So you have to have that conversation with patients so they know what they're getting into that stuff. I've, I've never been told what to do or how to treatment plan ever. And I've, I've had a lot of people, I've, I've been here for a long time. I've seen a lot of people roll through here. Not a single person has ever told me what to do. That's awesome. That's good. So you have full clinical autonomy. Full, full autonomy, complete awesome. autonomy. Awesome. So what does it? What happens when an associate comes in and they're new and they don't know what to do? Are you there to mentor them? How do oh, you yeah, definitely. So we, you know, we you toss them in because when you come out of school, you know you can do a two surface filling. You don't really know exactly how long it's going to take you to do that because you prep it you wait in line to get a check, you fill it, you wait in line to get a check. So yeah, I mean, it takes you three hours, but does it really without someone checking you? So, um, you know, for the first thing you do is just figure out how fast you are at stuff, what you're good at, what you need help with. And then we work there. And then once you feel like you're ready to execute an entire treatment plan and not write off more than you can chew, you know, then you, we start leveling you up and, you know, we're there, we help you put together treatment plans and, think long-term. And um, for me, it was very similar to Marquette. Like we saw the similar patients, similar comprehensive treatment planning, um, making sure that you're getting the whole mouth healthy and not just, you know, making a patient who's on a really tight budget spend $2,500 on one tooth when everything else is going to hell. But even though that patient is like, well, I really just want to fix this tooth, you know that that's not what's best for the patient in the long run. So once you kind of like get that kind of momentum going, then we, you know, open it up and slowly start once you're ready doing more things. Awesome. Um, someone just asked along with that, do you have a mentor maybe besides your dad um, with Aspen? Like, do you speak to them still? Were they easily accessible when you first started to help you throughout your first, you know, few years as a dentist? So kind of funny. <laughs> I'm more of a uh, figured out for myself type person. So I never leaned on my dad, even getting into dental school. I didn't want people to know that my dad was a dentist. I never pulled the card. I very much wanted to do it myself. So I, I rarely went to my dad for stuff. Um, it's, and again, it, when I started back then, we didn't have the support, like all the support systems that there are now. Um, I mean, my mentors were all the women that joined Aspen at the same time. I mean, we're all still like on a group chat and I'm sure if I sent a message now, I'd get a response within 30 seconds. So yeah, I mean, it, I mean, I, I'm very much in contact still with the people that I've, I've talked to and we all, we all kind of figured it out together going through it. So that's awesome. So you mentioned a lot, you know, like women and starting with a lot of women, have you faced any particular challenges, especially as a female dentist in your career to becoming who you are today? No, no, not really. No. Not with Aspen. No, I've, um, there, I mean, you get support, so much support and so much, um, love and it, it, it's great being a woman dentist with Aspen. Um, you feel really respected. They have, um, women's leadership retreats where a lot of us female dentists get together, um, and we'll, you know, do a CE event at different places and, um, yeah, I mean, the only the only stuff I get is from like an older male patient. Like, I didn't know that they let women be dentists <laughs> in the kitchen in between pregnancies. Now it's nice. 
Oh, that's great. <laughs> oh, that's great. <laughs> that's good to know. That's good to know that. Yeah. You know, I, I feel the same way too. There hasn't been any any no. issues been on the ADMI side. It's it's just been a great great experience with Aspen Dental. Yeah. Um, so going along with um, C courses, you had talked about a little bit about a little bit ago. Someone just asked, can you choose which CE courses to take, um, such as sleep or sorry, such as implants? Um, does Aspen pay for it, or does it depend on the type of CE? Does it depend on the owner? Depends on the CE, depends on the owner. Um, when I, I did the implant course, um, I was an owner, so I, I paid for it. Um, so, but yeah, I mean, if you're not an owner, you go to the events and usually the owner pays for it. Um, and then, yeah, you can pick and choose what you want to go to. I mean, if you can't take a tooth out, but you want to place implants, they're probably not going to green light that. Um, they're going to make sure that, you know, if you're taking these big investment CE courses, you are prepared for it and you're ready. Um, again, it, 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 this isn't an organization that's going to throw you in blind to something you're not ready for. So, but, but yeah, I mean, there's, there's CE courses for endo, um, implants, Invisalign, um, you know, they want you to do everything. So if you want to do it, they're on board for it. So yeah, we have an endless list of free CEs that you don't oh, even have God, to worry yeah. about. Like, you don't even have to ask the owner because it's all covered. It's all like... Yeah, and a whole website of free stuff. So like, when my license is due, I'm like, oh, crap, I got to get all the CE done. I just sit on the website and it's free. Yeah, right. Anything, anything you want to know. Right. And again, owners, you can talk to them if it's something that seems to be right for your office. Yeah. Um, you know, why not? Mm-hmm. Perfect. Um, let me see. So someone just asked, do you work um, or do you <laughs> just do admin as an owner or partner? I work. I'm a workaholic. <laughs> my, my son actually just came to the office because I was going to do his cleaning and he walked in. He's like, mom, is this where you live? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I work. Um, I like to work. I, if I sit still too long, I'll go insane. So do you think in the future, like if you own a couple more practices, you might step back from working or maybe, I mean, later on, I mean, right now I'm, I'm still young and I still love doing it. And you know, my kids cry a lot and whine. So it's nice to get out of the office <laughs> every now and then, but yeah, I mean, that's the ultimate goal, right? To kind of take a step back and phase out and slowly do it at your own pace. Um, I don't know, maybe we'll see right now. I love working so much. Yep. Avoid the kids as much as possible. <laughs> well, until they stop whining. If you're going to be, I'll come home. <laughs> I just love when we were doing the practice session for this, you were like, yeah. right? I'm, I'm <laughs> they'll you find me. My husband actually okay. took them for a car ride so that they wouldn't come bother me. <laughs> that was great. I was like, yeah, you're good. As long as it's a good area, we're good. We're good. <laughs> um, so what hours do you work? What hours does a new dentist work a week? I think that depends. The hours a new dentist depends. Depends, depends on your role. Um, are you an associate, an MCD? Um, and it kind of depends on the office. Some offices, they'll do like three 12-hour days, and then you have the rest of the week off. Um, I personally, because it's just me in the office, um, I do, you know, um, four full days and a half day on Friday. Um, if I have the demand for it and I have patients that really want to get in, I'll work a Saturday a month. If I still have more patients that want to get in, I might do two, but real short days and, you know, only, you know, like do big cases on a Saturday. If like a patient really can't get in during the week. So is that up to you because... Yeah, it depends on you. Okay. Uh, even as an associate, do, you, do they get to... Um, that depends on your owner, you know, so that's, that's kind of like an individual office thing because they are owned, you know, by individual dentists who run their practice and have different hours and different um, scheduling models. So, yeah, I mean, it, it depends. Um, so now transitioning into things that are happening now, I kind of wanted to hold off on these questions. 
um, until the end. Um, so in regards to COVID, someone asked, I've heard that DSOs often, um, you know, have to lay off dentists, furlough dentists during this time, um, during this pandemic. Has COVID impacted dentistry for you? Um, well, with this whole thing first hit, um, it wasn't on any of our radars, but it was on ADMI's radar. Like they, they kind of knew what was coming and they kind of prepared us for it. Um, but so, I mean, the layoffs did happen because I, you know, we all kind of hunkered down. No one knew it was coming. So we all just kind of took a breath, tried to figure it out together. But, you know, the people that were furloughed, I mean, we had, geez, we were on all conference calls. They were constantly, Bob and the, the whole team was constantly in contact with us, letting us know, you know, where everything was, where we were in um, relation to, you know, other dentists, other DSOs, um, what our PPE stock looked like, um, what it would look like coming back. They had a game plan. And I have four best friends that are in private practice and we, you know, we'd have, my phone would be blowing up at all hours of the night of them stressed out about, is it ever going to get back to normal? How am I going to find these N95s? Um, this PPP loan? Oh my God, like, what is this going to look like? What, I have to apply now. I have to apply later. I've got to apply next week. Um, and I didn't have to worry about that stuff. I, did, I really only had to worry about making sure my family was safe because ADMI just really took the reins and I am so proud of how they handled and weathered us through this storm. They were on top of it. And um, so did things change? Yeah, you know, we take temperatures and you know, we wear the N95s, we wear the face shields. Um, but I mean, it's really not anything more extra than what we already as dentists have been doing with, you know, safety precautions and, you know, PPE and, you know, making sure people are safe. I mean, there's more screening questions, but I mean, we're stronger than ever now. It's amazing. Definitely. Yeah, we've, I mean, it seems like almost, I mean, things have changed, but in a way, like yeah. said, it really hasn't because we're, we've always been on top of it. Um, yeah. We are also the second largest purchaser of um, PPE from Henry Schein next to the US government. And that just shows the ability, the purchasing power of Aspen Dental because we are such a huge company um, to be able to do that. We have such say in, in things that Henry Schein was able to provide all of that to us, um, again, next to the US government, which is yeah. almost like a crazy thought, like crazy to comprehend, but it's amazing. Um, and that's why no one really had to stress about not having enough PP or anything like that because it, yeah, it was, it was pretty outstanding and amazing how that whole, they handled seamlessly. They just, they had everything covered and I more so than ever felt incredibly proud and honored to be a part of this group. That's great. Um, do you feel like your office isn't as busy? Do you feel like you're lacking in compensation due to COVID? No, um, not at all. I think, I mean, my office, um, my partnership office, like that's busier than ever. So, I, it, I mean, we took a, a slowdown at first, but I mean, people that, people have been in pain. Dentistry didn't stop. You know, people's needs didn't stop because, you know, everything shut down. So if anything, people came out of it and were like, man, I, I really need to get to the dentist now. Like now when I can't go to the dentist, I really need to. So, you know, we had a lot of, we had a lot of people that have, that put it off and just hit that spot during, you know, the shutdown that they really needed to get out. So. Right. Right. Um, so this is a little step away from COVID, but um, someone asked, um, they've heard that DSOs tend to get rid of dentists if they're not able to meet production um, that's detailed in their individual contracts. Is that true? What's no. expected? No, I haven't. So we don't really have contracts. We have, you know, hey, don't start up an Aspen using our business model because it's really sweet. Um, and give us 90 days notice. Like don't just up and leave us. 
that's really the contract, at least the contract that I signed 10 years ago. You yeah. have no, like you, I need to produce X amount of dollars. I mean, it's a business. So you can't, I mean, you can't be just like sitting there. We, you have to make more than you put out. Like you have to make enough money to cover your expenses, but it's, it's not that hard. And so if you're not meeting your, like the break even point of a business is that's not, I mean, that's everybody's goal when they have a business is break even and go higher. We, you know, if you have troubles doing that, we have conversations on how to help you get there. Um, but usually if a dentist leaves, it's just, they just weren't the right fit for the office at the time, or they just weren't ready for it. And, you know, private practice isn't for everybody. DSOs aren't for everybody. DSOs are all different. You know, it, there's catch all that, you know, it's great for everybody, you know, and honestly it, it's not. So sometimes it takes people getting in it and being like, mm, maybe I want some slower, you know, maybe I want less responsibility. Yeah. So, but it's never, it's never like you didn't do three crowns this month. You're fired. Yeah. Right. That's, no. a, that's a weird, con that is such a weird thing that goes around about. DSM. I know. Oh, it's, it's weird. It's the huge, like the <laughs> biggest thing I hear about, like at lunch and learns, like what's your, like who di dictates on what treatment it is. And I'm like, you guys, you guys right. are the doc right. doctors. Who are we? Like, I'm not going to yeah. tell you. Yeah. You got to do a crown, even though there's not a crown needed. Like, right. Yeah. Like that's all weird. It's weird. But, <laughs> Uh, I don't know. No, no, not a thing. I don't know if the schools or I have no idea, but <laughs> it's kind of like when a patient says, "Like, oh, my last dentist put his knee in my chest and yanked it out." It's like guarantee that did not happen. <laughs> don't know where you got that from, but no, that's not a thing. <laughs> oh my god, yeah. Um, like Dr. Cox had said, we don't have contracts; we have agreements. And you yeah, know, like she said, it's the same thing that she had signed ten years ago. It's just you know, ninety day notice, just being a good professional and just, you know, right. making sure you're making everyone aware of what your next plans are and just giving us enough time to find a replacement and we're not leaving patients, you know, astray basically. So, um, just, yeah. Cause I mean, walking out, that's patient abandonment. You, you, you're a professional first and foremost, so you don't want to abandon the patients that you've been treating and leave them. Without exactly. Them. exactly. So there's no two year, one year contract with us. Just, you know, do the professional thing, which is the 90 day notice. Just be cool, um, man. Yeah, be cool. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, so one last question uh, before we end this. Outside of dentistry, who are you? What do you like to do? Right now, I'm a mom. I don't mind to do anything else. I'm a, I'm a mom. But otherwise, I like, I like going to concerts. I like going on vacation. Um, you know, I like being outside. I like a good cocktail on a patio. You know? <laughs> Do. Yeah. But Don't. right now, right now I'm, a, I'm in the thick of it in motherhood. So I really have no time for anything else. <laughs> you have how many kids again? I have three. So three. I have a six-year-old, a four-year-old, and an 11-month-old. Oh, thank you for joining us today. <laughs> Jeez. Thank you for having me because I just got some peace and quiet. <laughs> Pretend you have one more hour left and just hide away. Right. Oh, but that's another, that's another thing about Aspen. Like I took three maternity leaves, you know, they, they support you in that. And I didn't have to worry about, oh my God. Okay. I'm shutting my office down. You know, I had support and, um, you know, I could be a mom. Yeah, definitely. Is there anything you wanted to add, um, before we conclude this? AMA. I don't know. I just talked a lot. So. <laughs> you were perfect. It was I nice don't know. Also that, you know, we support mothers. We're here for yeah. short-term disability, long-term disability, it's FMLA. Great. We have full benefits, 401k, everything to support a family. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, we're yeah, I mean, like my, like my husband's a stay-at-home dad. It allows us to, to, have that opportunity where my husband could leave his, you know, he had a, a really good finance job and he's like, well, like we have the support at Aspen and now we have the means to do it where, you know, I can stay at home with the family that we don't have to worry about daycare and all that stuff. So, I mean, it, it's, they, they really provide a that's really good opportunity to have a family and yeah. that's great as a, as a woman in business. Yeah. That's amazing. Full support for women in dentistry. Yeah, so. Absolutely. 
Um, so we're just going to conclude this. Um, I want to thank Dr. Cox for joining. Also, I want to thank the attendees. Um, if you do have any questions, feel free to contact me. Um, if you have specific questions for Dr. Cox, you can forward me any kind of information and questions and I will get you in contact with her. We're yeah. open to shadowing opportunities. Um, Come again, on, see me. Come hang yeah. out with me. You can call me. You can text me. I, I like hanging out. <laughs> <laughs> and again, where are where is your office now, and where is the office that you will be purchasing? So my the office um, that I've been at for the past ten years is in Brookfield, Wisconsin. So it's like right outside of like Wauwatosa, Milwaukee area, like uh, out there. And then the office that I'm currently buying is in Lake Geneva. Awesome. So if anyone's in the need to shadow or just have yeah. any questions, contact me and we'll get you in contact with Dr. Cox. Um, she'd be, again, she said she'd be so happy to see you guys, meet you guys, talk to you guys via Zoom or in person. So um, thank you again. Thank you again, Dr. Samantha Cox for joining and good night, everyone. Good night. Good night.